come here today because you want to check out five new marketing strategies that's going to make 2020 really great for you guys. And I applaud you because um, I believe, and a lot of my clients are telling me this as well, that 2019 wasn't a wasn't a great year. It was pretty slow. Um, we didn't have the best start, did we, with having two elections and the banking inquiry. So it's kind of just left, I think it taught clients to slow down their spending and actually think really long and hard about how they're going to invest their funds. And it's really important now for people uh, managing their marketing budgets to make sure that they can actually get in front of people and invest their money the best way. Um, because what people are doing in, in tougher times, and it is a tougher ec economic client, is they slow down their marketing. So I applaud you guys for turning up to actually look at how you're going to not slow down your marketing, but just do marketing really smart. And I said in the intro to this, uh, just did a Facebook Live announcing this was coming on, there's no magic silver bullets with marketing. Um, what works for some people doesn't work for everybody. And you really have to be discerning with what works for you and what sits comfortably with you and what your target audience likes. So I'm going to run through all these systems for you, but I just wanted to say that at the beginning. If you're after a silver bullet, you'll be disappointed because there are no silver bullets. This really is, it takes a lot of um, strategy and commitment and understanding and trial and error and um, measuring to do your marketing really well. And that's just the God's honest truth. And, and I'm all about truth. So you've come here today. Let's get this screen going. Because some of these reasons, you might uh, be struggling uh, in your business. And I know this of a lot of my clients, they're really struggling in this technology era and they're really finding it hard to know how to do their social media, how to really hard how to do video, incorporate that into what they're doing and uh, really telling their stories. They're finding that really challenging. Um, a lot of clients that we've got in the camping industry do their selling at shows and expos and you guys might have some of you um, I, I recognize some of you from different industries that you're in you might be more face to face but this is a digital technology era and it's now a global community so you need to be actually getting your message out there in a far bigger message to a far wider audience so that could be one of the reasons why you're here um, another one is could be you're just finding it hard to get leads in the door now because what used to work doesn't work anymore and that's a really big one for a lot of our traditional clients and you may be here because you just want to get a strategy that helps your team build sales and positions you ahead of everybody else. And <coughs> I commend you if that's why you're here, because it is your job as the business owner to be bringing in the leads for your sales team. They should be obviously doing their job too, but it's, it's really important that there's a concerted effort across the board and that the marketing message is, you know, really starts at the top. So a little bit about me, because um, some of you guys I actually know, which is really cool, but some of you I don't know. So um, these are my values. And the reason why I share these first is because I think you might see some of these values in yourself because like generally attracts like. And I think one of the big things you should be doing with your marketing, if you're not already, is actually sh sharing what it is that you stand for and letting people know what it is that sort of is your driver. So for me, it's inspiration. I love inspiring and being, in and being inspired. Definitely creativity in my line of work. That's really quite helpful. Passion is another one. I think by the end of this one hour together, you're going to get that I'm really into marketing. I'm really into helping people. Connection uh, is massive for me, so much so that we developed our own line that we call Connection Marketing, which is kind of like what I'll be sharing with you guys today. Uh, trust, trust and respect features really high for me too. And I actually won't work with clients if I don't, I just won't work with any old client. And I think that neither should you. I think there has to be a high level of trust amongst the, in the relationship and a whole high level of respect. So I personally believe that if you don't um, love your clients or if they don't love you, I, I don't know why you're working together. So, and I think even if you're selling a product and you don't get to meet your clients in the way that um, relationships are now and, and the whole premise of what we're teaching is, you know, you could be selling something from camper trailers through to um, there's somebody on here, Kelly, who has dairy-free store. You know, you're selling dairy-free items. And there's a whole lot of respect that you would be putting out in your marketing and a whole personal level of interaction. So whatever your actual individual traits are, you should be communicating those because people will resonate with them, whether it's an online sale or whether it's a face-to-face -face sale. And I think that's actually how you cut through in the online space if you actually treat that transaction like it's personal. But I go into that further on down the track. And loyalty, that's my last thing. I think loyalty is incredibly important. I think it's um, a value that's kind of dying off a little bit, but I'd like to bring it back. <laughs> 
And this is my why. Everyone should share in their business their why. Uh, these champion young guys, they're my sons and they've been with me from, I actually almost well up when I think about them. They've been with me from the beginning of the business. I've been a designer for 25 years and I started my business 20 years ago when Kurt the, on the right knew when he was born, which is, I think, a common trait with a lot of people um, in business. And I'd be interested to see if this is the same reason, if you want to put your hands up, if this is the same reason why you got into your business is because when you had a family, you actually wanted to be more proactive and more in their lives and freedom and choice was a really yeah that's cool Sasha yeah I get it um and and but what I see and this is a one big reason for why I want to actually <laughs> Jane um this is one big reason why I do what I do with connection marketing is that I see so many business owners um struggling they're working 12 14 hour days and it's it's too much they got into business actually wanting to connect you know to their family and the last it's actually the last thing they're doing they're working too hard they're working day and night so you know the whole purpose of what we're doing today is to not be like that um personal brand that's incredibly important to me in the 20 years that i've been working in the marketing industry i've gone from seeing uh, I mean, websites weren't even around when I started. So we were really working just on brand, but it was really different. Big companies had it all over small companies and the way that a large company would market themselves would, um, it was so expensive, you know, advertising was so expensive. They would do TV commercials or radio commercials um, and small companies, the best that we could pull out was like probably a one color, a one page flyer in that was black and white, you know, through a photocopy or something, or like one color print. It's so advanced. We so have an advantage now over um, most people or the way it used to be. And it's people are confusing that with making noise. And so I think it's we've got to go back to being quality, what we put out with it, creating our personal brands. And you can see by reading the quote, people trust people, not brands. I think we've really moved into a very um, person-centric way of marketing. And I think this is an absolute advantage for small businesses these days. And when I say small business, this could be, you know, with a hundred people, it's still a small business. You should be marketing all around your people. And we're going to talk a lot about that in the coming hour. And just to show an example of this, this is a client of mine. So that's myself, James, my videographer, and Melinda, the photographer, and um, Steve Sid in the middle. He is a client who has a huge successful story from using uh, personal branding. This is one reason that drives what I do and which is the whole premise around connection marketing is he came to us, he's in the catering industry and he came to us last year, um, probably about 15 months ago now, and he had a good solid reputation. He had one restaurant um, doing a little bit of consulting work, but he wanted to work on his branding. And I talked him into like pushing his brand forward. And he actually, and I'll show you some samples of that later. He actually um, worked with us. We did a video for him, photography. Um, we gave him the confidence to start doing a bit of a plan around how to do his social media. And he started just, he went with that with great gusto and he was doing lots of Facebook lives and really in a personal and sincere way. And his business exploded from um, one restaurant to 14. And in the past 12 months, he's now got 14. So they're like, when I say restaurants, they're restaurant spaces within clubs. And he's got 17 function spaces and he now employs over 200 people. And this is what happens. So he had a solid, I don't want to say he wasn't a startup. He had a solid reputation behind him, but no one was getting the message. No one was really understanding kind of, you know, his success and what he could do for them. And that one, that one thing that he did with his marketing about making it personal and backing himself and really talking about his story catapulted him to this kind of success. And he's just now growing this absolute, this empire. <laughs> so, you know, I'll, I'll sort of show some examples of what he did going forward. But I love talking about Steve. And we're working with some other clients at the moment too in this sort of space. And I'm going to be, as the year goes on, sharing more and more of their personal stories because this could be the difference between you um, getting sort of mediocre traction and really just getting your message out there a little bit and getting your message out there with people that really resonate with you. And that's why I showed you my values before because they're so important that people understand who you are and what you stand for. So they've got something to attach to. And this is me, um, the Connection Marketing. I launched this last week. If some of you follow me online a bit more, you'll have seen um, 
It's an online course that we put together. And I might talk about that a little bit at the end where I offer you guys a special deal. And it's all about how do you do connection marketing for yourself. But for the next 45 minutes, it's just going to be um, valuable content. So I'll talk about that at the end. I just wanted to sort of introduce it here and be transparent. So the first tip, the first thing you should be doing when it comes to giving your marketing a, a real boost or a kick up the ass, quite frankly, uh, for two, uh, 2020 is you need to go back and do a bit of a bird's eye view over your business. How many of you guys regularly assess where you're at in your business? If you just want to show with a raise of hands, do you kind of, or do you just kind of like plow through and you just kind of like keep doing the do, or are you actually actively, um, putting together strategy and, and then going back, doing the bird's eye view and looking at it and monitoring how you're going. Okay. So I've seen no hands go up. So I think we're okay. Let me talk about this then in a little bit of detail. Uh, oh, okay. So, Oh, Carly, you put your hand up. Great. <laughs> I'm just learning how to monitor this, this system. So if you see me looking over here, I'm just looking at my other monitor with the hands going up. So, there's a lot of things you need to know in putting it together a strategy, but I put it down in three things just for this webinar that I want you to concentrate on. I want you to look at how are you unique? So I ask, are you unique? So the question is, yes, you are. But if I ask most business owners that, the answer they give me is they don't know how. Um, so the best way to try and figure out how you are unique is you probably will stumble with figuring that out yourself is actually go to people that do business with you now and ask them why they chose you. And uh, really trusted people that aren't just going to like people please and say, you know, nice thing, but people that you actually trust their advice, ask them why they chose you because it's really important that you know what makes you unique because this is exactly what you're going to market around. And quite often it's our stories that make us unique and our, our personal journeys. So I talk about that in the next couple of tips, but that's just a bit of a hint, but you really need to ascertain what it is that makes you unique and different. Um, and if you're saying it's, sometimes it's your product. Some people have a new to, a, mark, a product that they bring to market that's completely unique. But most of the time, it's not your product or your service. There is somebody that does it as good as you, sometimes even better, or there are other people that do it differently. But it's, it's the, the, the special magical essence that you bring to it that makes it unique. And this is what we need to kind of tap into. So we'll talk about that a bit more. So my tip is go ask other people what make you unique and then sort of like draw really establish what it is that people keep choosing you for because it could be something that you absolutely didn't even realize and I can guarantee you it's going to be something that they feel was a connection between you and them it could be something as simple as um you uh I'm, I'm just thinking there's, there's whole businesses that I know because my partner and I've just become vegans would you believe um there are whole industries based around businesses that are all vegan supporting each other so there's a vegan PR company that supports vegan businesses. So this, this is what I'm talking about unique. And it's really cool because it helps you to drill down into how to market yourself. So you just stand out to an audience because we now no longer have an audience that is just our local community. Like most businesses, because they can get online, can deal with people around this whole entire country. They can even deal with businesses all around the world. So it's much easier now. There's a saying where you can go two inches wide or two miles deep. So two inches wide is kind of like, this is the target audience that I'm going to be serving. This leads us into niche target audience, actually. Um, this is the niche target audience that I'm serving. And this is the how deep I can go in servicing them. So you become an absolute expert in that field and you can create marketing materials specifically around that. So if I was using, um, I've talked about Kelly before and I, only because I know her business. So she's got the dairy free store, which is an online store and it's a new business. And I know you're probably having, I know she has some challenges in getting that message out. And we've talked about making her brand message more um, personal. So because she's got a really great personal story and it's a journey with her and her customers that she can take them on. And it's really, she's sort of identified her niche target audience. So I'll use you, Kelly. I hope you don't mind. Put your hand up if you do mind. Actually, keep it. Put your hand up if you're happy for me to talk about your business. But it's just good to give real live. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to give real live um, examples, so then people can sort of like understand it with your business. Like we identified, you know, your target audience are are mums that are concerned about the products that they're putting into their children's mouths, and it's not just like into their mouth. It's also on their skin. You know, I've had a lot of education from Kelly. It could be the shampoo, the skincare, the way you wash your clothes. 
um, so you have a lot of plant-based stuff, but it's, it's essentially like a dairy free message. And it's also mums that um, may be time poor. So they need to have like things sent to them to make their life easier to do this. They don't want to make everything from scratch. And it's, um, they have to have sort of some kind of income to be able to afford this. This isn't for people that are struggling on an income. And the other thing in her niche is that they may also have skin complaints. They could have eczema. Um, they, their kids could have allergies. They could have allergies. Uh, but it, or it could be just a high level of consciousness that they are. So can you sort of understand, like, if she drills right down into that niche target audience, she's going to understand a lot better how she can market to them and give them more more succinct marketing messages that are really relevant to them rather than kind of wishy-washy messages like, hey, I've got this really cool pea protein uh, protein powder, which I use, by the way, it's fantastic. Uh, do you want to use it? That's really not a good marketing message. Whereas if she sort of says about that pea protein powder is, um, hey, for all you guys out there that are plant-based, this protein powder doesn't contain any animal proteins. It's all 100% uh, vegan friendly. Would all the vegans out there like to try this? And all of a sudden you've got every single vegan jumping up and down, getting very excited because this is a product specific to them. So I hope that makes that really clear about um, drilling down into your niche target audience. The other thing I want to say about a target audience is that it's not just about um, who they are, where they live, how much money they own, you know, um, what car they drive, how many children they have. I mean, these are all part good ways to establish a niche target audience. But what we want to get into, and this is the next part of what I'm talking about, is pain. What pain are they in? What keeps them up at night? What do they emotionally connect to? So in the case of using that dairy-free store example, they, they literally could be in pain where their child flares up, their skin flares up and they can't sleep at night if they eat a certain dairy product but like, like chocolate, but they absolutely adore chocolate and they don't want to not have chocolate um, and all the kids at school are eating it, but, you know, can, is there a product out there that can service, that can help them? They just want to feel the same as everybody else. So, you know, you can get even deeper level pain than that too. You know, people can be in extreme physical pain from eating the wrong kind of products. So, and it, that's a good example of pain, pain. Pain can be all sorts of things, you know, in financial services, um, when we de we're dealing with um, lawyers at the moment, we've got a, a legal client and one of the pain points we're working on with them is um, they're in the family law space. So it's incredibly important. There's a whole lot of pain in that space. But the, the biggest driver could be that they really don't want their kids to be affected. You know, So there's all sorts of things. You really need to get to know who your clients are so then you can actually get to this deeper level of understanding what pain they're in. Because I guarantee that when you actually understand this, um, when you find out their fears, their frustrations, desires and concerns, you can really start connecting with them in an incredibly authentic way. Uh, I'll give an example actually of the caravan and camping industry, which I know very well. We, um, you would think, oh, there's no real pain in that, you know, somebody buying a camper trailer. Um, I hope you guys have got a cup of tea too, like I've, I've, my voice goes all the time, so I'll be, you'll see me sipping on this the whole time. Um, the caravan and camping industry, they have it's a unique pain and I, I actually used to help do their sales when I'd go around I, I was um did the marketing for one of the biggest players in that industry for quite a few years and I would go on in the, with their sales team and help them sell and I would love because I would actually outsell their best salespeople and I was pretty stoked because I'm not a salesperson but I get marketing and I get pain so I would talk to the women so most of the guys would make the mistake there that they would talk, talk to all the males as the clients and they'd be talking about the you know the thickness of steel they'd be talking about the height of the tires and the draw the the, um, the length of the drawbar because that's really good for reversing and all these things that you know are really amazing things but it's features and benefits that they're talking about it's not actually the fundamental reason why the hell they even want a camper trailer and we're talking about something that could have cost five grand to a hundred grand you know so this this is a price difference and the big number one thing that I found that a lot of the women, and the women are actually the driving people in this and making the decision about doing the purchasing, it was the women who would say, I just want to get back to basics in our life. Our life is too busy. We are absolutely drowning in 
in day-to-day life and technology. My kids are plugged in all the time and it's always this. And I just want to go camping and leave the devices at home for a week and just play, play beach cricket and just do what we used to do as kids and connect as a family again. I thought, wow, that's really personal. Um, and um, guaranteed if I could tap into that pain and then show her a trailer that matched to the, that pain, she w- they were making that 20 grand, 30 grand purchase. And I was pretty proud of myself because that's how you do it. That's how you make that kind of connection is actually ask your clients, why? What does this product give you that uh, anybody could really actually satisfy, but they've never asked the question. And so therefore it's the person that asked the question that understands their pain that gets the purchase. So uh, I've probably spoken enough about that. I can go deeper into that detail later on if you like, but um, that's, that's where marketing is at. If you discover somebody's pain, what pain they're actually in, and then provide yourself as a solution, you are across the line. You really will not have um, the dramas that a lot of companies are facing right now with you know dried up leads. So my tip number two, I'm just conscious of time because I'm not going to let this webinar go over. Um, You should create a package. You should package up your products. And then the second part of that is actually reinvigorate old quotes and customers. So let me talk to you first about creating the package. So I have packages. And one of the most genius things that I did last year was create packages because people just want to understand what the hell it is that you do. And the beautiful thing about when you create a package is you can then give discounts and but you're not discounting your services. It's just if you buy more, then you get the discounts applied because as a reward for you buying more. So you're not going into that whole price slashing ugly phase, which I really don't like the idea of providing discounts. It's not good for your business. But if you provide short time limited offers or if you have a package where you're upselling people, then they get something for free thrown in because they were upsold, well, then that's really cool. So I'll give you an example. I'm going to use myself as an example in this one. So this is, um, we do websites, as you can, I think you guys probably figured out, that's one of the products that we offer. So you can see right at the beginning here on the left, we've got the startup and tradies packages, and it's really clear, we, we just say exactly what you get. And then it's like a, a scale, sliding scale across to the right of the services that you get. And you can see that as it goes across to the right, it becomes more and more and more um, quality what, what's sort of thrown in as the price increases so too does the quality but you can see when you get to the where the bomb package and then the show me the mum the money package we start to actually put things in to the package that you get for free essentially but it's all built into the cost but you still are doing better than if you bought these things individually um, from me at a staggered time so you can sort of see with the where the bomb get a social media overhaul and the, and access to the free online course and with the show me the money, you even get the email marketing template thrown in as well. <coughs> so what I love about packages is that it's really, really transparent. People understand what you give. I mean, you should never be frightened about showing your prices online. People, they just, they're, they're researching. They're researching late at night. They're, they're compiling information just as much as they're trying to figure out if they want to do business with you. They also want to figure out what's it going to cost because, and I, I'll show this sort of in the few, down into the webinar When you actually connect with a company, they don't actually care what the cost is, as long as it's within their budget. It can't be like ludicrous, but as long as it's within market value, if you're on the XE side of market value, it doesn't matter because they see your value and they just want to know what it is and what they get. So I highly suggest that you run packages in your business. It's a really um, fabulous way, A, just to be transparent and for people to understand what the costs are of working with you, but it's also really great to just give people what they need and, and dress it up in a way and to and the whole do you want fries with that. It's selling more and, and, and suggesting to them what it is and you know that they need these items. So all of you could be creating packages in your business, particularly leading up to Christmas if you're in sort of like a, a re, the retail space of where you're giving a little bit more value and they're getting something and they feel indebted to you because, you know, you, you've helped them out. You've made good suggestions. So definitely package up your services or your products. and Selling back to existing customers. Now, this is like the number one way to reinvigorate your business if you find things are a bit slow. Um, Everybody should have a database. Uh, Raise your hand if you don't have a database that you're actively marketing to right now. I'm intrigued to see. Yeah. Okay, so most of you are, or either you're not raising your hands, or thank you for your honesty. I won't go shouting out names here. Um, But 
you'd be shocked. I go into some pretty decent sized companies and we help them out and they have got kind of got a database. It's kind of in their email program and it's kind of over on Beryl's computer over there. And it's, it's kind of their Facebook and kind of, kind of, kind of, and it's not a set designated database. You need to have a database of your existing clients and your past clients and people that you've been marketing to people that have maybe, you know, you've quoted in the past and you need to regularly go back to these people, particularly if they're old clients and you need to find out why they stopped doing business with you because I can guarantee it's probably just that they didn't feel valued by you. And I'll explain what that means in a second. When I say they didn't feel valued by you, it's, um, they just didn't hear from you. And it's really easy to get in touch with people these days. Like, just throwing up random Facebook messages every now and again, that's not staying in touch in a deep, meaningful way with your clients. If you've actually done business with clients, um, you really need to be like appearing in their inbox in their emails. Now, some, there's always an exception to the rule. Some people hate it and you can just let them bow out of your email list. That's totally cool. But there are, if you're giving plenty of good information and you're being really helpful to your customers, they are... They're very grateful when you come into their inbox with good suggestions, good tips, good information that helps them and makes their life easier, particularly if you're talking to their pain and you're providing solutions. Um, not all of your correspondence has to be selling. Please don't make all your correspondence selling. Like really 80% of it should be just helping and letting people know, you know. So you can be doing things like putting on webinars like this um, in any industry. I challenge anybody and you can put it in the like type a message to me, I challenge anybody to give me a, an industry that wouldn't benefit from giving information to their clients or people that they've dealt with in the past. Because as you can see by the slide on the screen, it costs seven times more to acquire a new customer. And yet that's where so much marketing is, is focused on getting new customers when there's so much value in the people that you've quoted for that you didn't quite land that job or, uh, you know, people that are sort of like umming and ahhing, umming and ahhing, and they just haven't been getting much love from you. So they actually just haven't come across because they haven't understood the value proposition really in what you've been offering, maybe because you weren't talking to their pain. Um, I just give it, remember Steve, I showed you him earlier in the actual video. Sorry, in the webinar. Um, Steve Sid, the, uh, the guy that has the restaurants and clubs. This is really important. When we redid his website and the video and he was up on social media and he was really, he was just sort of like really showing off what he could do and really talking from the heart. And he was totally talking to people's pains and showing himself as a really positive solution. He got his big break. It was about three months later. It was a tender that he'd missed out on with an, a big chain of RSL clubs. So it wasn't just the one RSL, it was a whole lot of different big family clubs with big budgets. And he'd missed out on the tender. And one of the reasons why they went with a bigger company. And I think they just didn't feel like he had the ability to deliver. They really kind of thought he might have, but they just weren't confident, so they didn't go with him. And then once he changed all of his marketing material and started presenting and pitching himself in a much more sincere, genuine, authoritative leadership way, they had hated the person that they had put in charge. They booted them out and bought Steve in. He had one month to set up um, all of those restaurant spaces and the event space and hire all of his team. And he did it. It was unbelievable what he pulled off. But, um, and that came from, that was an old lead. So that was reinvigorating an old lead, you know, getting back in touch with them just through doing all of his normal general kind of marketing pieces with email and his social media and just being more profile. So I hope your mind's racing now with people that you've spoken to in the past that you've just let go. Uh, it's guaranteed that they probably, if, if somebody left your services, I really think you should run a survey to them and find out why that was, because I can guarantee it's probably something you can fix. And it's something that if you address, they might even come back to you if you want them. So that's, it's probably the, the hottest tip on how to reinvigorate and make 2020 a really sensational year if you're finding things are a bit slow, is just go back and look at who all your old clients are and do this survey and show them how you change and show them how you actually really understand the pain and that you really get them on a deeper level. So the third tip that we've got for you, and this is my favorite tip, um, and I've been touching on this, so I won't need to speak as long on this. It's creating quality content and then amplifying that and becoming an absolute epic storyteller in your industry and this is what it's all about when i said before that really 80 percent of what you put out there 80 <coughs> percent should be just fabulous quality content 
So what's quality content? <laughs> Well, Gary Vee famously said when he came out and toured Australia, um, I think it was earlier this year, he famously said that um, 100, you should be putting out 100 pieces of content a day. You know, so that's kind of impossible for mere mortals like us that don't have your own professional videographer chasing you around and a whole sales team supporting you. But here, this is a really, really, really um, great statement that he makes about giving value. So I'll just read it out to you. Give value, give value give value and then ask for the business. Uh, and then he talks about, you know, you can never make bad content into good content. The biggest thing people don't understand is that quality content is so important to marketing to anyone under the age of 40. Um, if you are not crushing it and focusing on the content that you put out on the most important social platforms, and when he means by that, I think he means the platforms that your audience are on, you're going to become mute and obsolete in the modern day of doing business. That's why organic reach, and I love that he's promoting organic reach, is so important because the impression you get when someone comes directly to your page is a much more qualified lead and potentially a more valuable customer than someone you got through an ad buy. Makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? When you think about it, when somebody's coming to you because they've identified with you, so they, you might have put some kind of like a Facebook ad or something up um, advertising to a webinar like this. <coughs> so it's good content that you're providing and it's helpful content that you're providing. Um, and then that's where you sort of, you might've spent a little bit of money on that ad or boosting the post or something, but then you're, you're more likely to keep that customer if you've been marketing around your pain, their pain and your, you as the solution, because they've already sort of like identified you as a person that's really got them and understands them. And they're more likely to stay with you rather than if you're just like, advertising features and benefits and and it's just a special sale come and shop with me at this special sale time that doesn't breed loyalty no one's going to hang around for that and so the whole point around content is that people look to their social media just as much as a form of entertainment as if they're watching tv so you need to be entertaining them you need to and i don't mean you need to have them stitches but you need to be giving them content that they can relate to that is engaging to watch and entertaining so i'll step on to the touch on that in a minute just remember this in your content uh, when you're marketing it. It is very much like a first date. If you only talk about yourself, there's not going to be a second one. So you want to be, and this is what I talk about where you're talking about the client's pain. You need to be talking about uh, them, specifically how you help them and what they're going through. You talk about success stories of your other clients. You talk about, you know, how you're actually impacting the world with what you're doing and the positive things that are coming out of that. And there's a million stories. You just have to learn how to untap that and become an epic storyteller. So these are a whole lot of different ways that you can actually create content. And what's interesting and what a lot of people don't realise um, is the web your website is still the number one thing at the centre of everything that you do. It still is very much the focus, the house for where all these things point to, where it all sits. But you can sort of look around when I go around there all the different things that you can be doing, like a weekly expert vlog, video marketing, podcasting. Podcasting is a massive one. If there's really, if you want to connect with an audience who's time poor, if that's somebody in your demographic, people, I go back to Kelly with the Dairy Free Store, I would highly recommend a podcast for your business where you become an expert and you are just educating and getting in guests all the time and telling them, you know, getting them to explain. So if even if you're not an expert in this area, you can bring in experts who then can be like really giving a lot of knowledge and people are seeking that knowledge every day on how, if you've got a kid with eczema that's scratching their skin red raw and they, they can't wear certain fabrics or, or they can't even go to school because, you know, it's weeping so bad and the kids at school are teasing them and they're creating, they're getting social problems from this. You can bring in an expert that can teach them or explain to them how they can lessen the severity of that eczema. And then, hey, lo and behold, Dairy Free Store sells the product. That is colossal marketing. And that's exactly what Gary Vee meant when he said, give value, give value, give value. And there's other ways, you know, you can have a call to action. A call to action is really, really, really important in your business, in your website. Um, everybody's website should have uh, right at the top something that they can download that's of high value to them with important information but they have to give over their name and their email address because you guys as business owners you're in the business of um, 
of collecting these emails because you're in the business of marketing, you're in the business of bringing in leads for your sale team. So that's how you bring in a whole fresh batch of new leads is by having a very, very good lead magnet on the front of your website. And then you sort of put people into a nurturing system with emails that go out in an automated, automated fashion after that. You just have to make sure, you know, people are going, oh my God, that just sounds like spam. It's not spam because what the problem is, you've probably only seen shitty versions of this. You need to look at some companies that are doing it really well or think about one that you've probably subscribed to. And when it's really high content, people are excited about getting that into their inbox. I'll give you an example. I um, So per, uh, personal health and fitness is something really incredibly important to me. Um, like I said before, I've just become vegan. So I'm now looking for vegan recipes everywhere I go to try and make that really um, the transition into being vegan really interesting. And, and I'm trying to transition my adults, my teenage boys and adult boys into it as well. And, um, and you can only do that by providing good food. So if I'm going on to uh, websites that have sell vegan products and they've got a really excellent call to action that's really relevant to me and taps into that value of mine, which is to try and convert my kids to becoming vegan as well and making the transition easier. I'm going to be loyal as, as all, you know what? Um, and I'll happily give you them my name and my email address and keep getting the correspondence if they're helping me, they're soothing my pain. So I'm hoping you really get that. Do, give me a hands up. Are you really understanding what I mean about, I know I keep reiterating. <laughs> Thanks guy. Oh, that's really nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's really important that you do this. Um, and I just keep repeating the statement because I'm trying to just bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Because every day in the marketing that you do, you need to keep bring it back, bring it back, bring it back to the pain. Because otherwise you'll slip back into just where you're telling, where you just go back into the features and benefits of your product and you're not relating to the actual uh, the guts of what it is that makes people buy from you. And the other thing is because we are going into a tougher economic climate, I mean, some people are even whispering the word recession. Um, you want to be the business that is recession proof because you still have, people still have pains and they need solutions and they will soothe those pains. They will spend their money, but they're just not going to spend it frivolously. So you really need to connect in a major way. So they think that's where I'm going to spend my money. That's money well spent. I can't live without that. So it's going to be one of the most important ways to market leading into the future. So I'm going to move forward because I could speak about this all day if you can't, can't already tell. Um, it's really important you get personal in your marketing. And I sort of explained that before because 71% of people are triggered um, by an emotional response, which then creates brand loyalty, which is what you're after. You want people to talk about your brand like they love it. You want them to say, oh, my God, did you hear about um, uh, that new online program over there? Oh, my God, yeah, I love her. She does such a good job. You know, that's the kind of language, the emotional response you want to get. And this is an example, I was talking about the caravan and camping industry before, and um, my late husband was in the caravan and camping industry. And we, I, this is kind of like where Connection Marketing was really born. Um, I, we were turning everyday salespeople into media superstars, I've got to say. They were, they were selling at expos and shows. And then so these guys, Steve in particular, would go to the shows um, after doing, uh, they were making a lot of video content and they were getting seen, uh, massively seen on YouTube. They were being published into niche um, publications by industry. And, uh, you know, they, they were kind of like influencers before influencers became a thing, because this is a few years ago. So we were also, I was managing his um, personal Facebook stuff, and we would just put up family photos and things of, you know, we're out and about, the top ones, you know, out and about with the film crew, and some major icons in the industry. So like brand association, piggybacking off those famous brands. The second photo you can see is um, a photo of us on a camping holiday. So the sincerity and the, and the um, authenticity behind that he really was a camping man and everybody that we, from this company that we would promote that they were camping people. Um, and then we would go to, you know, industry functions. So you can see that's me down below at the big red bash. That was a phenomenal thing that we did. It was so, um, great to get there. And he was signing autographs there by people that recognized him. And he's, he's just a sales rep for a camper trailer company. So this stuff really works. If you actually create a superstar um, premise around your personal brand, and it might not be you, might, as the business owner, sometimes it's not you. It could be a superstar salesperson you've got on the team or, or somebody, you know, or anybody, you know, there's so many different varied businesses on here. There, there could be somebody, I'm hoping it is you as a business owner, but 
it could be somebody else in your team. In this instance, it was the sales team because the owner of the business was not a charismatic man at all. So it was much better being the sales team, making them the superstars. And you can see this is them. We would go out and shoot DVDs and uh, you see these are all the different, these are salespeople on the trailers, not, not actors, not presenters. And what's interesting is they've, some of them have gone on to actual professional careers, like the girl on the left, she's gone off. She is now a professional presenter on a TV show, a mainstream TV um, the guy on the XT17, he is a massive YouTube influencer now. Um, and Tony's a sales rep. And then Steve, unfortunately, didn't get the opportunity to. Um, anyway, so we've got the, um, you can see that we've got the videos below. They did a Fraser Island trip, a Cape York trip, Birdsville to Broome. And these were all self-funded by the company. Now, this is big, big scale stuff. This is big uh, production stuff. But we can, i show you this as an example because they didn't used to be a big company. This started out, the owner of the company was a croupier at the casino 12 years ago. He started out selling um, by importing um, state of origin flags from China and selling them in, I can't remember, Lang Park, is that it, up in Brisbane? He would sell them in the car park at Lang Park. And then he came across all these other things from China that he could sell, he was quite entrepreneurial. And then he came across camper trailers and he started importing those. And that's how he started. Now he's one of the leading companies in Australia um, and they do like four wheel drive caravans. So you can scale up. You can start from the beginning and scale up on the journey. If you just have this ethos from the beginning and you work within your means from the beginning, there is absolutely no, the only limit that you put on yourself and cap on your business is you. I swear to God, there would be so many more successful businesses out there. There's so many small businesses and so many are struggling. If only people could just stop limiting themselves and work on their beliefs, their self-belief and start putting themselves forward as the, as industry leaders and themselves as being, you know, the authority in their, in their industry and their passion for the industry, their businesses would just take off and absolutely explode. Because what I would really love to see, I, I hate corporations. My partner and I loathe corporations and we feel like there's a revolutionary, a revolution of small business owners coming through and, and small business owners, I think is up to like a hundred people coming through and absolutely turning industries on its head. And with, with technology, we can do that. So I'm passionate about this. I'd love to see you and your business succeed. So the reason why we want to do this kind of engagement is because engaged customers buy. So they, and they're loyal. So they're going to buy 90% more frequently from a brand that they're engaged with. They're going to spend 60% more. And this is what I talked about with packages because you package up your services and you give them more. And they're five times more likely um, only to use you as that brand because of the loyalty. So this is what happens when you use connection marketing and you're using yourself and your people as the connector because people connect with people. These are some of the other benefits that you get um, with the relationships. So you get awesome referral partners. It's really awesome when your clients start referring you. They become raving fans. They give you lots better feedback. So when you put out a survey, they'll tell you what they like and don't like. They can, they'll start helping you develop your product lines and giving you that kind of feedback, which is an amazing way to grow your business. Um, repeat business, loyalty. They create business opportunities. It's amazing when you get a fan who could be quite an influential person. The doors that they can open up for you are quite phenomenal. Um, uh, yeah, I could give you tons of examples, but I'm going to run out of time, so I'm going to keep moving forward. But really think about you know, who's in your circle. Who do you know? If you could have a, a, a more tight relationship with these people, you could really, really expand your business. And, of course, positioning yourself as the industry leader, there's a lot of weight to that. You know, you want to be the go-to person. So when somebody talks about that, um, that pain that they have, they go, oh, you got to go see this person. They solve that problem. And I've talked about Steve already, so I'll sort of flick through that. So that's Steve again. And this is what this is the kind of post that he would put up. This is a photo. He was getting some free PR because people were noticing him so much on social media. So that's a, his local newspaper came and did a story on him about, um, you know, what he was doing out there. He's at Moorbank Sports Club. And they did a bit of an article on him. And then he put it up on social media and boosted it. And look at the likes he's getting, you know. He's getting up. That was, that was when I took it. And he was also pretty excited because he got his first hater. Somebody put up underneath that post, oh, man, it's just a dude eating a hamburger. <laughs> and he loved it because he's like, yay, my first hater. So when you start getting haters, you know you're actually making it. Um, and I would not honestly say that. If everybody loves what you do, you haven't cast your, you haven't cast your reach wide enough. 
until, and nobody wants haters, Jesus, but until you do get people, you know, in the background kind of like not digging on you, then you know that you're actually reaching out into greater areas because it's really important to say this. It's, it's very personal and exposing when you make yourself the face of your business. And, and I'm going through this at the moment. I'm, I'm launched Connection Marketing and I feel very vulnerable around that um, because it's just me, you know, and, and it's my mission, my thoughts, my content, my heart and soul. And, you know, people are judging that. And you've just got to find ways to cope with that and understand that this is just the way to move forward. And think about the big brands that you follow and how personal they are. Uh, and I, I think hopefully you can understand that you can't avoid it. You can't avoid it, but if you don't want to, but if you want to get growth and you really want to move forward and stand out and do this quickly, you can't avoid it. And that's um, just what Steve's website looks like now. So you can see it's nothing flash or, or, or over the top. It's just, it leads in with a video at the top. And then we went out and we did all these branding shots with him and his team, lots of positive statements, lots of positive messages, and just really communicated clearly what they do. He's got, if you scroll down, if you went and visited his website, photos with him and his kids and his wife. It's very much a family business because his market is a family market. And I'm going to sort of flick through, but if you want, I can actually send you guys, um, just let me know at the end. You can sort of put through in the comments. I can send you through these um, notes so you can sort of have these as uh, prompters for you about ways that you can create connection online. Probably um, showing the people that you do business with is a really good one, definitely for authority. And then the, the lead magazine, I was talking about books, ebooks, manuals, tips. Um, Success infographics, that's a really good one too. Sharing with people how well you're doing and sharing your results. Video content, oh my God, you just can't go past that. Having a private Facebook group. You can build a community through that. I, I really, um, I can talk to you about that in a later time or if you do my course, I talk a lot about private Facebook groups. A lot of people get a huge amount of business from the private Facebook groups because they come into it. So you don't call it after your business name. Like um, I'm just toying up with, I'll probably do one for connection marketing. And then people that are interested will just come in and start talking and asking questions. And so I'm not there in a, sale, in a salesy capacity and there may be other marketing people join it, but it's just private Facebook groups really consider that for your business as a place where it's a value add where customers come in and they, they're asking questions, potential customers, I should say, come in, they're asking, they're asking questions and you're getting, they're not going to go on your page, on your marketing page and do that but they'll go into a group and do that. So really see the value in doing, um, having a Facebook private group. And Kelly, I'll use, I keep using you as an example just because you're a good go-to. We've been using your example the whole time. The Dairy Free Store, you really should have a Dairy Free where you're explaining that. We're just, just a general page, like a, a group. So people can go in there and just feel like they're getting information and not being sold to. And other people can go in there as well. But you're going to be the leader because it's your page and you'll be monitoring it the whole time. And this is why you want to build trust. So all these exercises around building trust because 76% of sales decisions are based on reputation and trust. So 71% were emotion. Um, actually, it's more like 95% actually, but 76, 71% uh, was personal. 95% is emotion. 76% is trust. So these are really important emotions that you need to be evoking in all of your marketing because desire, trust and credibility and value brings you customers. I love this. This is, you can even print this out and put this up on your wall. And it sort of every time you put out a marketing piece, refer back to it. Because um, you need to be ensuring that you're covering off all four of these areas with all of your marketing. Otherwise, it could become too salesy um, or irrelevant or disinteresting. Because our job is to connect to people and to interact with them in a way that leaves them better than when we found them. And they're more able to get where they'd like to go. So it's kind of like when I was talking about the, um, the wives of um, when they're buying camper trailers or caravans is there's no point talking to them about the length of the drawbar or the weight, the towing capacity. These are all things that they need to know, but these aren't the things that are going to make them to make the decision. I know people that have gone and bought new cars because the, the caravan that they wanted was too heavy to be towed on the back end of their car. But, it delivered all of the things that they wanted in their heart, the kind of glamping experience that she wanted because she knew she wanted to go camping, but she knew she couldn't rough it. So she's going to buy that caravan. Now, if somebody just sort of said to her, what do you drive? She said a Toyota Kluger. They wouldn't even have showed her that caravan because it's not able to be towed by her car. 
but that's what she actually wanted. And people will make, I, I've seen it in $100,000 transactions, people will make allowances and changes to get what they really want. So it's our job is to uncover what they really want and to connect to them. And that's how you find out, is by asking them and connecting with them. So tip four, I'm only up to tip four. I'm conscious of the time, so I'll keep flying. Um, I've talked a lot about it before, so I can just fly through this. Video is essential to your business. Um, everybody should be doing video, whether it's a Facebook Live, whether it's just making your own videos. Um, everybody should have, I think, a professional company video on their page. That should be professional. Uh, you really should just budget for that and find a way to do it because people far resonate more if they can see your face. They understand the person behind the brand they, and you communicate with them your why, um, how you understand them and how you're the solution. You really get that information across and then they will resonate with your brand. So video is essential and you can see 80% of the content online now is video. And when you look at a new platform that comes through, like the latest one's TikTok, all the new platforms are coming through show video. Um, I think yeah, LinkedIn's even bringing in a live video capacity. You know, you've got all your different Instagram stories and your Facebook lives. It's all around video. It's, it's not the future. It is the present, you know, get on board. <laughs> And these are some stats if you want to have a quick look. This is the one that I find really interesting. People that have trouble, uh, pe to me, SEO is almost redundant, search engine optimization about paying, paying people to bring traffic to your website. If you're actually optimizing your website well, you'll have lots of good fresh content on it and you'll have video on it. And that is going to bring in the traffic. Um, so paid SEO, their days are numbered. They really are. And the last tip that I wanted to spend a little bit of time on before um, I wrap this up is strategic alliances. It's really, really, really important, just as important as invigorating your old database, is getting some really solid structures and really solid people around you because who are also advocates of your brand, because it's the quickest, fastest way, particularly in tougher times or if you're starting out, and this is exactly how I started out, it's the fastest way to grow your database. It's the fastest way to get in front of people and not be a cold um, referral, but having people that are linked to your industry in some way to refer you. So, you know, I started out as, as uh, branding and websites. So beautiful feeders for me, for my business were marketing strategists and now social media strategists. Business coaches were a huge one because they, they, they've got so many businesses that need to improve their marketing. Um, accountants everyone asks their accountant for advice and they pitch themselves as business advisors now too whether they're good or bad and so they're huge referral partners for me so you need to do and I will show you this document <coughs> I've done this example for a high-end building company but you can sort of see the way it works so you need to figure out uh, who it is so in the middle goes basically who it is that you want to try and attach attract so for me um, there's a way the strategic alliance is, is that it's either, oh God, I'll go backwards. I want to attract, so the target audience I want to attract is high-end building companies, just using in this example. So that's what I put in the center. Then I go in and I put in the center of the circle all of the traits about them, you know, and then this is only a general one, but you could go right into detail. You could be saying they play golf every Friday or something like that. So then on the outside of the circle, you actually look at, well, who are the people that know and deal with high-end building companies that I might know that I can get into? So right at the top, I've got industry business coaches, accountants and advisors. Just that alone, I could spend a week getting in contact with all the different business coaches I know, all the different accountants I know, I know a ton of accountants and different types of advisors or financial planners um, and saying, well, who do you have in your books that are high-end builders? You know, and how can you make, do an introduction from, from you to me, to them? Um, because I've done a whole lot of great stuff and look at what I've done with my builders and these are the results I've gotten for them. I'd really love to meet your builders and can you set up some scenario uh, where I either meet them in person or just do some sort of like soft contact through LinkedIn or can I run a webinar for your clients or can I, can we do a newsletter together? You can be in my newsletter, I'll be in your newsletter. Would you like to, can I be in your podcast if, you're, if one of your people on this outer circle have a podcast? Can I be in your podcast and can I talk to them? Like down the bottom, I've got real estate agents and property developers are a great lead into high-end builders. Well, maybe there's a, a savvy real estate agent out there that's got a podcast. Can I be in your podcast and, and, you know, and talk to your builders directly about the services that I offer? So this is the biggest 
tool that you could use to grow your business really exponentially in 2020. And it's what people spend very little time on. It's creating the relationships with the people that can put you in front of the audiences that you already serve or that you want to serve. So think about who, this is why it's so important back at step one that you did the, you know, the, the bird's eye view above the top of your business and you really came to understand um, who your target audience is. And if, if you do my course, there's actually a lot um, more steps to doing that, but that was just kind of like a bit of a general overview. Um, when you get right down to the nitty gritty of their pain and their suffering, you can really use this strategic alliances here to connect deeply when you get that warm lead, say, you know, from an accountant or an industry professional or who else have I got there? Architects, interior designers, people that know those high-end builders that will make it it's such an easy transition for them to do business with you. And so you're not a cold call or you're not a faceless social media post. You're not just some other, some other person on LinkedIn trying to friend request, you know, trying to like connect with me or, or friend, friend request me or send me an annoying personal message or damn, who's this person spamming me by email? Like you are connected to them through this connecting partner. So a lot of people are doing this with LinkedIn now, but I find LinkedIn, it's kind of, um, can be a bit cold and sterile, sterile. Like it really, there's, there's other better, sexier, more engaging ways to do it. Like LinkedIn, it's a great tool, don't get me wrong, but it's one tool. So really think laterally about how you can actually stand out and be different to everybody else. And we sort of talk about a lot about that in the course. So I'm gonna give you guys some homework. I hope you don't mind. These are my suggestions, is that you should, in the coming weeks leading up to Christmas, and particularly in January, because that's when everybody just goes to sleep. I want you to triple your communication with your current and your potential clients. And I want you to go back through and reinvigorate your old database and really uh, get back in front of them. Like, don't, I know people feel like we're spamming all the time, but we're not spamming. It's, people don't see all of your stuff. Something like barely 10% of your face, Facebook people will even see something if you put a post up, even less if you don't boost it. If you send out a newsletter, um, an, an average subscribe rate open is like, an average open rate is 25%. You know, I've got clients that are getting 50%, which is unheard of. So people aren't seeing all your messages. So you've got to triple them. So at least they've got a better way of seeing them. And because 80% of your time, if you're earning under a million dollars a year in revenue, 80% of your time should be devoted to sales and marketing. Um, so I really want you as the business owner to work towards this as your goal as to how you can do this, because this is when your business is actually going to grow. So right now, you know, if you're just a one man band, you're going to be struggling to implement the kind of things you need to do with your marketing, get the traction. So you need to find a way to get people to help you um, do the output of your business. So you can spend the right amount of time on your sales and marketing. Otherwise you are going to really struggle to grow. And I want you to consider becoming a master at connection marketing, which is kind of like what I've been talking about in the whole time on the webinar. So this comes to the end where I actually sort of just transparently pitch to you about the course that we have got right now. And thank you very much for staying with me. You've all stayed, which is so cool. So if you give me five minutes, I'll just tell you about this special deal that we've got going. So I have put my heart and soul into this online course. It is, um, it's phenomenal. <laughs> it's really good. I've been doing this for 20 years and in the past 10 years, really working in the online space with clients about putting them forward as the go-to person in the industry. And I've done it with normal everyday salespeople and I'm doing it with business owners now. And it really, really works. So this is the online course. It's at connectionmarketing.online. It's aimed at business owners. And, uh, but even if you're from a, a decent sized company, you could get your sales reps to do this. Like it's, Everybody should have their own website. Everybody should have their own LinkedIn profile and their own identity because it makes you more desirable. So even if you're a corporate on this um, right now, and we're doing this with a legal company right now, we're making their, their solicitors rock stars in their chosen field. Like we've become, it's become a, a world of specialists, not generalists. So if you become a specialist in your field, even if you're working for somebody else and you uh, understand how to do your marketing, your, your desirability and your ability to um, grow your personal brand and get better clients and command your wage is phenomenal. Mm -hmm.